Airports, like much real estate, can be a lucrative investment. Commercial airports make much of their profits from taxing airliners and the rest from retail concessions, restaurants, and duty-free shops. What if I told you there was once a commercial airport owned and operated by a black aviation aero club near the nation's capital? The Columbia Air Center in Crewe, Maryland was founded by John W. Green Jr. and the Cloud Club of Washington, D.C. Welcome to the Melanated Wings Collection, presented by Better Endeavors, LLC. This week's episode, Volume 1, Episode 15, will cover the rise of John W. Green Jr. and the Cloud Club. Green was a native of Atlanta, Georgia, and was born on Christmas Day, December 25th, in 1900. He moved from Georgia to attend Hamptons Institute to study mechanical engineering and graduated in 1922. After studying aviation at Boston Trade School, he received his commercial pilot's license and transport pilot's license in the 1930s. He was only the second black aviator to receive these licenses at the time. Green was also the first black American to receive an aircraft and engine mechanics license at that time. In August 1939, Cornelius Coffey invited Green to join the National Airmen's Association, NAA. Green accepted the invite and quickly became the group's vice president of the Boston chapter of this organization. John was invited by Willa Brown, NAA's director, to come to Chicago to assist in the civilian air patrol training program. John refused the offer and instead moved to Washington, D.C. in 1940, where he taught aviation mechanics at Phelps Vocational High School and Armstrong High School until his retirement in the 1950s. Here, Green would meet and teach the individuals known as Cloud Club. This club consisted of President Harold Smith, Vice President Roland Bronner, Treasurer John Pinkett, and other notable members Alvin Barnes, Andrew Martin, David Peter, and Charles Ware. John Pinkett utilized his own Piper Club Coupe as the club's first aircraft. When the Cloud Club was organized, it began flying out of Beacon Airfield in Alexandria, Virginia. The group faced discrimination, which forced the club to leave Beacon and find their own airport. They leased a 450-acre stretch of land along the Patuxent River in Maryland from Rebecca Fisher for $50 a month, $835 a month in 2020. Originally called Riverside, the airstrip was later named the Columbia Air Center, CAC, which was located in Crewe, Maryland, and was the first licensed black-owned and operated commercial airport in the country. The airport's first flight took place on February 22, 1941. During that time, the Cloud Club owned six planes, which flew on eight runways that could accommodate 150 arrivals and departures an hour. Cloud Club members gave flying lessons, hosted air shows, and developed Riverside Field into a safe and well-run operation. They sponsored the airfield's first air show in 1941, which drew over 800 spectators and featured parachute jumping, acrobatic and precision flying, and airplane rides. The Washington Afro-American newspaper, August 16, 1941, heralded this event as the first of its kind, as all of the pilots and performers were black aviators. The Cloud Club hired their own instructors for flight training, owning and leasing some of the most popular aircraft of the day for use by their students. By October 1941, the Cloud Club appointed Green as airport manager. John Green Jr. managed the field from 1941 to 1954. During World War II, the Navy took over the CAC. The U.S. Navy renamed the airport to Riverside Field and used it for training until mid-1944. John was appointed aircraft mechanic at Camp Springs Army Airfield, now Andrews Air Force Base. He would return to manage the CAC in 1946. In 1956, Green left the CAC and became an instructor at the University of Colorado's National Aviation Education Workshop. He remained here for the remainder of his career and retired in 1976. Other achievements in the life of John Green include memberships in many flying clubs, the establishment of the Boston School of Aeronautics in 1930s, the organization of the Air Scouts of America, 1912, 
and the formation of the first Black Civil Air Patrol Squadron, Columbia. Mr. Green was a lifetime member of Negro Airmen International, NIA. The DC chapter of NIA was renamed the John W. Green Jr. chapter because of his many achievements in the field of aviation. John William Green Jr. died on March 25, 1988. His late wife, Eunice Daniels, had preceded him in death in 1951. They had no children. The post-World War II CAC and the Cloud Club welcomed pilots, both black and white, to the airfield, and the operation thrived in the years immediately following the war. Charles E. Wren and Herbert H. Jones Jr. became the new managers after Green's departure. They operated the field as the W and J Flying Service. Herbert Jones has served as an Army Air Corps aviation cadet at the Tuskegee Army Airfield during World War II. After the war, he returned to the GI Bill to earn his flight instructor rating. After leaving the Columbia Air Center, Mr. Jones worked as a corporate pilot and operated flying schools at both Hyde Field and Potomac Air Park in Clinton, Maryland. Charles Wren continued to manage the airfield as the Capital Flying Club with partner William L. Taylor. Wren and Taylor, along with Charles H. Dabney, also formed the Sportsmen, which organized many of the recreational events at the airport. By the 1950s, however, the CAC's flying activities began to decline as was the case with many of the smaller airports in the country until it closed its doors permanently in 1956. The airfield closed in 1956, but is remembered as one of the finest airfields in the nation, a clear testament to the hard work and efforts of the Cloud Club and its members. More information on the Columbia Air Center can be found in the links in the description. Leave a comment below. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like our next group of aviators founded the aforementioned National Airmen's Association. Before they branded themselves under this name, they were known as the Challenger Aero Club of Chicago. This group of men and women were inspired by the late great Bessie Coleman. Together they owned two private airports, a flight academy, and operated a civil air patrol over the city of Chicago during World War II. Cornelius Coffey, Willa Brown, Jeanette Bragg, and Johnny Robinson are the most famous members of the Challenger Aero Club and will be covered in part one of our final episode of volume one next week. Subscribe to our channel and click the bell to receive notifications of next episode's premiere, along with others to come during our first volume. Feel free to visit our website listed in the description below to learn more about our volume one chronicles. As always, have an uplifting day and stay up.